diet. That's the main focus of the whole first half of the World Peace Diet is about this disconnect and the incongruence, the fact that we're, we have a set of beliefs in compassion and kindness and mercy and justice. We all believe that. We don't, we don't think of ourselves as being cruel, malicious, vicious people. But, but are we living our life, our, our actual daily actions in congruence with those beliefs? And most people on a spiritual path um, find it very difficult to give up, say, taking out their wallets and paying for someone to stab animals. We're killing 75 million animals every day in the United States alone just for food. I mean, this is a massive killing operation where we have whole armies of our brothers and sisters that do nothing than kill and stab and brutalize animals, hyper-confine them, mutilate them, kill them. And so we are causing that by our choices. So the, um, I think some, more and more as we feel ourselves drawn to a spiritual life, to spiritual enfoldment, um, we'll see that it means not just praying, meditating, reading, studying, and, and all those things, and living a, a, you know, a kind life just to other humans, but really to being vegan. That being vegan um, is the expression of the spiritual yearning, that in a sense, <coughs> If I'm not living a vegan life as best I can, which is a life of, redu of minimizing the cruelty I'm causing to other living beings, then my spiritual efforts are really, in many ways, ironic. You know, I'm, I want for myself, but I refuse to give to others. And the whole spiritual path, I mean, if you, I think, could boil down the spiritual teachings of every religion to one sentence, it would be this. It would be, whatever you most want for yourself, give that to others. If I want to be free, then free others. If I want to be loved, then be loving. And this is the, if I want to be blessed, then bless others. This is, this is every religious teacher. That's the essence of what they've taught. And yet, that's what we're not doing as a culture to animals. And so, this is the great point of greatest power for us as individuals and as a culture to transform our world is through looking at what we're eating and how we're living our lives. What are we paying for when we take out our wallets? Are we paying for circus misery, zoo misery, leather misery, food misery, um, drug misery, you know, all this massive amount of misery. And the beauty of it is we don't have to. I mean, I have not been to a doctor in 30 years. I've been a vegan for 30, well, vegetarian for 35 and, and vegan for 30. And um, it just opens up a whole doorway, I think, of freedom for ourselves. That's monumental uh, accomplishment that it is for sure one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful um, expressions um, of the uh, human mistreatment of animals for food and for clothing and for entertainment and for science. And that as we um, spread the message of that movie, you know, see it ourselves, show it to others, show parts of it, I think like there's a lot of people giving courses on the World Peace Diet uh, around the um, the country now, and quite a few people, as part of that, they will take uh, out of the uh, Earthlings movie the part about using animals for food and show that to the people who are in the class. So, so because, and I've heard it makes a huge difference because it's one thing to read about it, to think about it, but it's something else to actually see it. And when people actually see it, they go, "Well, why didn't you tell me? I didn't know it was that bad." <laughs> you know, they suddenly. I remember teaching, uh, you know, classes in philosophy, and I, we talked about these ideas, you know. And then I showed a video, and then this, and this, before that, the students were kind of ho hum, yeah, yeah. And then it was after that, it was like, whoa. I didn't know, you know, they just don't know. And so I think what the Earthlings does, the great gift that it gives our culture, is that it makes us aware of what's behind the curtain of our denial. It pulls the curtain back, and it, we see actually what we're doing. And I think that is enormously empowering. And, it's, and you know, I discuss in the World Peace Diet the idea that um, we have a shadow. And the shadow is, the, is what we truly are, but we deny being, and so that that is what controls us. The psychological you know, function of the shadow is the part that we've denied in ourselves. And so as a culture, we have this huge shadow. And what Earthlings does, I think the great gift that it gives our culture is that it reveals the shadow. And once we see the shadow, then it may be painful, we, we may be resistant, we don't want to see it, we don't want to know, but once we do, then we have the power to transform our consciousness. We can begin to behave in new ways, go to a higher level where we're not actually causing that kind of misery, and then be able to reap the rewards of that in our lives, which is simply more happiness, more joy, more freedom, more self-expression, more creativity, and uh, create the foundation, really, where a life, a social life of peace and justice uh, and 
creativity, fulfillment, and joy is actually possible. So I think it's, Earthlings is one of the most vital and important tools that we have as, uh, not just as animal rights activists, but as anyone who cares about the earth and about future generations, about starving people, about animals, uh, about human beings, about their, you know, about their children, um, to be able to just express um, the feelings that we have by showing this. Because you, you can show earthlings, you don't have to say anything, you don't have to try to convince anybody of anything. People just go, they get it, you know, they just get it. I've, I've been, I've showed this on sidewalks, like in Lawrence, Kansas, we showed earthlings on the sidewalk. People are walking by, and you don't, you don't have to say anything to convince people to go, whoa, and they, people go vegan, or they give up buying leather, or they say, I'm not going to a circus anymore, and they see what's happening, and that's, none of this stuff would happen if people didn't pay for it. It's really our, the cultural, you know, act of taking up the wallet and paying for things that keeps it go all going. So instead of fighting so much against the industry, I think the most powerful thing is to just educate all of us to just stop paying for that.